I became interested in how meditation works. It was clearly having an impact on my mood and uh, you know how I was seeing things and how I was experiencing people. And so I really realized that there was, I felt like it had changed my brain. And so I went to understand that. Um, our initial work mostly focused on long-term practitioners of meditation and we compared them to people who had never practiced before. And we put them through an eight-week program to see how their brain changes with practice. Our primary finding is that after eight weeks of practice, there is increases in gray matter density in several brain regions in the meditators compared to the controls. One of our findings was that the amygdala becomes less dense. And the change in the amygdala density correlated with change in stress. And it's well known that the amygdala is the primary fight or flight part of the brain and that uh, activity in the amygdala is related to cortisol levels. So this change in amygdala is highly consistent with the self-reported decreases in stress. More recently, we have some new data showing that there are also increases in the hippocampus, which is one of the main learning centers of the brain, where it's found that the change in the hippocampus is correlated with a measure of being able to um, effectively disengage and engage in tasks. I realize that there are a lot of healthcare providers who don't know much about meditation. You know, most people, when you hear meditation, you know, you think incense and chanting, and um, they don't have much regard for it. Our data is really helping us to understand how it is that these practices work. And there has been a lot of data now to demonstrate that they're effective, but there's always a little bit of, you know, well, is it really effective or is it just a placebo effect? What the brain data does is it helps explain how and why meditation works. And so I think for skeptics, this is really important because now they know that it's not just people saying, I feel less stressed, I feel less anxious, I feel less depressed. We can actually show that the changes in brain structure and function are correlating with standard Western measures of anxiety, stress, and depression. And so we understand now how and why these practices lead to decreases in medical symptoms. I think it's useful for the medical community to see this data so that they feel more confident prescribing these practices to their patients because they understand now why and how these practices work.